I'm building the ultimate Lego tank and running it through ridiculous tests against minifigures, blocks, chips, ducks, and a whole lot more. I even set up an agility course to test the tank's maneuverability as well as some various terrain to test suspension. To succeed on these tests, I'm going to build a remote control tank that's quick and maneuverable, has hundreds of shots, and a fire rate around 15 shots per second. To top it all off, an action cam will be attached to the tank so we can see it all in an epic first person view. The first thing every tank needs is a capable track system, complete with suspension. So I'll work on that task first. I'll be using a Christie suspension for this tank, though I also considered using a torsion bar suspension system. Both types are commonly seen on actual tanks, and both can be recreated easily using Lego parts. This motor will provide power to the tracks. The front sprocket is also part of the suspension system. Its job is to maintain proper tension on the tracks so no slipping occurs on the drive sprocket or other sprockets, even while going over rough terrain. Now for the tracks. Let's give it a quick test. Yep, that looks like it will work really well. So that's one half done, and here's the other. This frame I put together will connect the two halves. Additionally, it includes one motor that will spin that turntable. That's an important function that I'll get to later. I'd like to test this base in a second, but I need a couple more things. I'll use a BooWiz 3.0 for this tank, since it can control six motors, which is exactly how many I'll be using. If you don't have a BooWiz 3.0, I'd highly recommend them for remote controlled models. There's a link in the description if you're interested. The whole tank is going to be heavy, so I need braces to make sure that the tracks don't bow outwards. The last thing before I test is a roller bearing. I've used other methods for roller bearings in the past, like the ones in the working enchanting table and the working shulker box, but this time I'm using one that LEGO has used in some of their Technic models. Awesome, that will work great as a bearing. Okay, it's time for a test. This is looking fantastic. With the tracks complete, I need to tackle what this tank will fire. These red Lego balls, AKA Xamor spheres, will be perfect since they fly a long distance, can be used with a large hopper, and are easy to reload. Oh yeah, and they can be launched rapid fire, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'll need a hopper that can store hundreds of shots, so not this one. And one launcher is great, but I'm going to see if I can fit seven of them on the tank. Well, it took a couple tries, but this is what I came up with. There are a total of seven launchers in two rows, driven by two large motors. When the red balls are loaded, this is going to be sick. There's also another motor over here that drives four linear actuators. They allow the launchers to be tilted through a wide range. Now I just need a hopper. A few minutes and a whole lot of beams later, here's what I've got. It's got a floor, sidewalls, and hinging pins in the front so I can connect it easily to the launchers. So far so good, but the balls just fall right off the end of the hopper. This odd looking yet effective front wall should take care of that problem and guide the Xamor spheres right into the launchers. Yes, that is working really well. 
Hey, just where do you think you're going? Go back to your room. I mean, uh, Hopper. One issue I didn't think about before has now become apparent. When the launchers are tilted up, gravity pulls the balls to the wrong side of the hopper, so the launchers would quickly run out of ammo. I think I'll need something like this that raises the back of the hopper as the launchers tilt upwards, so that a downward angle is kept at all times on the hopper. Well, I'll be back in another minute. Okay, so what I built here is a custom linear actuator using these new worm screws. Thanks, Lego. This is a great piece. The worm screws are geared in such a way to maintain a similar hopper angle no matter the tilt of the launchers. And it looks like it's working great. Now I just need to finalize the hopper walls and make sure there are no collisions during the tilting process. I'll add some of these, some of those, and a roof with extra room for any spheres that get pushed around during tilting. And finally, this hinged cover will allow more balls to be added easily. Plus it looks really cool with the transparent beams. Time to load it up. 200 Xamor spheres coming in. Okay, just gotta make sure nothing collides while tilting. Yep, that looks good. Finally, tracks and launchers have come together to make the ultimate tank. Never before has such a tank been assembled. And not only that, uh, oh, you're already done attaching it? Oh, I thought that was gonna take a lot longer. I was gonna give a whole speech. Uh, oh well. Let me plug in the wires real quick, and then I'll show you the sweet action cam we'll use for epic first person footage. Here's a harness for the cam, and even a hinge lid to provide access to the micro SD card and USB ports. I'll put that right here so the camera is swiveled and tilted right alongside the launchers. Hopefully I'll get to show you some great footage with that. I know I've got tons of fun challenges waiting, but here's a preview of the tank, because I just can't wait. Ah uh, yeah, it's safe to say this is going to be a lot of fun to drive around. Okay, I got walls to shoot down, flags for an agility course, this device with some Lego torsion springs to put chips into, this rubber duck shooting game, some fireworks, and even more. Let's see if this tank stacks up. Okay, here comes the agility course. Looks kind of tough, to be honest.
Oh, that suspension looks solid. How about some aluminum foil? Well, I was hoping for the Zimmer spheres to break the foil, but at least they made that smooth, shiny foil look really bad. Ah yes, finally the battle with the ducks. I taped them down to make it a little more even. This legendary fight will go down in the history books. Well, I'm embarrassed to say that I've obviously made the wrong video. Forget the ultimate tank. How about the invincible duck? If you enjoyed, please leave me a like, or better yet, subscribe, or even better still, share this on social media with all your friends who need a comedic engineering video. Click here to watch my LEGO Minecraft playlist, which is fire, and click here to watch some other random video I decide to link to. Thanks for watching.